great to see you from Copenhagen. Great. Yeah. And so actually, Rasmus we'll was supposed to. Clock. Rasmus will also participate from Brussels, but uh, I think he think it's it's on Sunday and not Saturday. So I don't know. Maybe he'll join us. Maybe yeah, not. I, <laughs> I hope so. We'll be recording anyhow, so he can Good. see it later. And I'm just welcoming Ash from uh, Jersey City. And here comes two different people whose names are in Hebrew. I don't know who they are. And Gatam from in from Hello, Leah. And Gatam from um, India Hello. is also joining. So we have a nice... <laughs> Full house here. Um, okay. What's up, guys? Please. Um, I'm going to mute people who. Oh, Katom, hello. Uh, nice Maybe, to see you. Wonderful. Maybe, Wendy, uh, long time. Great long to see you. Time. You made some of the best graphic design for Green Map, as I recall, over the years. Thank you. Um, so I want to say welcome, everybody. We're going to get underway here. Um, this is our first demonstration of 2021. We're so glad you're here for an introduction. Um, this is going to go fast, but don't worry. There's a video and tutorial document. And remember, this is in beta. Um, so there's going to be small tweaks, but between the uh, beta and your common sense, you're going to be fine. But we welcome questions and we'll help you get over the hurdles. Now, thanks to Bogdan and Alexandra. I don't know if you two want to wave. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a great platform in progress. And Mary Hunt, um, yay, oh, that was me, um, will be showing us how she makes it sing in about 15, 20 minutes. So now I'm going to ask the GIS Collective to take over and show you how to get started. We're just so lucky to have their involvement and ongoing support of our mission to think global, map local. So take it away. Thank you. So can you hear me well? Yes. All right, so I will share my screen. And I will start by showing you the first steps when you create an account on, on a new open green map. So here I'm logged in, I'm on the welcome page. And uh, when I first want to create my first uh, green map, I need to go and create a team. And you can add a team from this plus button go to team and write uh, the team name, which let's say is my oh, awesome team. And we have some um, placeholder for uh, people who are not inspired. <laughs> All right, so then here you can um, tweak your team. You can update the description of your team. Uh, you can add a custom logo if you want to. Uh, you can add a few pictures of your team. I can do it so like this. And then you can in, uh, invite some members. For now, I will invite Alexandra. And I was going to say, if it's not fitting on your page right at the top, you can hover over view options and say fit screen, fit to window rather fit to window if you're having a problem. Go ahead, sorry. No worries. And I can also invite Wendy. I think this is her email. And of course, we have some um, access control. So if you don't want to give full access to one of these members, you can choose uh, them to be a guest or member or something else. But for now, we'll make Wendy as an owner. Right, so this is my team. We have here a custom uh, option that you can publish or uh, keep your team private. Um, I will make it public for now. All right, so now that we have a team, I can go and create a map. And of course you can put up a logo, a photo and other things with your team and give people more background on your organization and your purpose. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. So my new map, and I can use some description. And here, because I can be part of uh, more than one team, I can choose uh, to which team this new map belongs. So I will choose my awesome team for now. 
and my team is created. So here you can have a bunch of options as well. Like you can change the team, um, you can make the uh, map public or private and so on. Uh, for now, I will only change the cover photos. Let's put this picture. You can set the start and an end date if you have a project and you want to say when it started and when it's ended. Um, you can also select the icon sets that uh, are going to be used for this map. By default, on this platform, you'll have the green map icons uh, selected by um, by us, but if you want to customize it, you can do it so by changing this list. Let's say, I don't know, we can we use can the SDGs you. and the recovery icons. Oh. I, I would like to ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you started with manage, but I don't see manage on my menu when I start the open street map. Yeah, so in order to see the manage uh, option, you have to register and create an account. And once you are logged in, you can see the, the manage section and this plus button. Thank you. Good question. Yeah, yeah. so now I, I can save my custom list and I can also select an, a map extent. And this extent is the area where my features will be added to this. Uh, to this map. So I can choose the whole continent or a city. We can select only Berlin, for example, or or you can, so you can choose the a rectangle or if you want to, you can customize it and so on. And this extent, it's also important because when you first, um, when, when, when a user goes to your map, um, this is the area that will be visible for them. So be careful how you set it up. All right. So now I created my map and why not I can make it public. All right. Uh, so um, adding sites, uh, it's easy, but we have uh, a few ways for doing this. Um, the easiest way to do this is to go on um, on the home homepage, um, go over your area, let's say Berlin, right click and you can go to propose a site. And this is uh, some a contribution page where uh, other people can propose sites to your map. And since we are on this area, um, the platform already suggests, suggests you uh, the maps that contain this point. So I can choose the map that I just created, uh, my new site and some description. If you want, you can also add some pictures and you can customize the icons. For example, here is um, what their when, feature? When did you do you want questions to be held till the end or during? Um, if it's a sh what do you think, a short one maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, for example, hovering over Berlin, there may be another map. What we didn't do is recognize this map, mm -hmm. right? As in by name. I know your team is called My Awesome Team, mm -hmm. but you're you're calling this My New Map. Did mm -hmm. you did you search for that? It looked like you just hovered over Berlin, mm -hmm. but there may be, you know, in other words, you're not zeroing into a map name. I'm not sure if I uh, understand the question. So you're generally when you so select like this, it will show you if you've added that point within the extent of your map, your map will show up on that list. Mm -hmm. You will be able to add, um, and maybe this is more complicated in your case, Jersey City, because you have layers of maps from the past. And so maybe we can answer that separately because it's a it might not be a problem for anyone else um, or many other people. So let's hold that question for a moment. Okay. Yeah. In, in yeah. languages? or on English, mm -hmm. the name. 
The name, this name? The name is only in English? You can make it Hebrew. Okay, thank you. You can type in any language in inside the map. Um, we have been asked, having people, Natalie on the line here, for example, did the French for um, the interface. So if you want to have, if you want to have a Hebrew interface, we can give you the script for that. And, um, but whatever you put in the map and in the descriptions stays in that language. You may even want to put two languages in there or three. And this is also where the sound component comes in because some of it could be spoken and not written if you wanted to do that. Thank you, Wendy. So going back to this uh, form, the general idea is that um, here on the map section, you will have suggested all the site, all the maps that contain this point. So when I submit this, uh, this uh, site, it will be added to my map as private. So me as a, as a map maker, map, map maker, I can review it and publish it, publish it later if it's, if it contains some, um, I don't know, things that are not appropriate. So this is the edit uh, uh, page for the site that I just added. Another way to add a feature, which is probably simpler, is to go here on the plus button and go to feature. And here you can have um, a simpler interface where you can add a name for this feature. And here you can choose your map where you want to add it. And then you can customize the position, let's say somewhere here over this airport and click add. And when I press this add button, I will be redirected to the edit page for this feature where I can add the description and so on. Does uh, all the um, who participants have to uh, list themselves to the green map or only the managers? So uh, this plus button is only available, available for uh, your team members. So for example, if Mary doesn't have access to my map, when she goes to add feature, here, she won't see my, my map listed here. She will see her, her own maps instead. Okay, but they have to list to, to join the, the green map too, to... Public can suggest, um, but there's different ways to do that. So let's, let's let Bogdan go on a moment. And uh, by the way, Bogdan and Alexandra are the developers of this platform and um, we're all very sensitive to questions and ideas um, as we go on, but let's try and hold questions now so we can go finish this um, demonstration of Open Green Map 2, which is the new mapping platform for Green Map system. It's meant to be used locally and shared globally. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> so, um, of course, on, on this platform, you cannot you can add more than points. So for example, if I go to my new map and go here on a select file, I can choose a bike track that I like. So let's give it a name. And when I add this one. And he's added that file. You can create a file like that with an app like Strava. Um, there's many Map My Ride type apps that create this. Is a GPX file? Is that the right letters? Um, that you can upload here, and then your your route is immediately mapped. Exactly. Yeah. So now I have my bike track here. I can I, I can customize it with some icons. I don't know. Something like this. <laughs> I think I can also search for a bike track, right? So yeah. let's use this bike track icon. And because this is a bike track, I can set it as a primary icon by dragging the icon here over the primary section. All right, so uh, other things that I can do is to edit this bike track. Maybe, I don't know, uh, this line is over some blocks 
and I can move it on the street and make it more up to the to reality and so on. All right. <clears throat> so I added a few uh, features on my map. I can go to the browse list and I can see all the uh, features that I added. Here I have access to a link to my team. So if I click here, I can see the team pictures that I added or the members and the team maps that I have. Of course, this is the uh, description that I just entered. And if I am on the, on the team map, I can browse, I can navigate through the map and see all the features that are added. So if I click this one, I will have this site or this one, I can see the track and so on. Um, yeah, I think this is the basic demo. Um, I will stop here and I will come up later with uh, some new features that we recently added. Um, hi. <laughs> hi, Wayne. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, where can I see all the green uh, map that are uh, on the um, this platform? If uh, like there, I don't know, you, you have like 20, 20,000. Uh, okay. Anyway, where can I see all no. of them? Okay, so Bogdan is going to put share again, I guess, um, to show us. But right now, we are, um, you're, you're new to this. We've actually had a mapping platform for the last decade called Open Green Map, and now we call it One. So when we built, started to build Open Green Map 2, we brought over all the data. So this platform actually does have 40,000 sites in it, but because people have not gone back and checked them yet, they're not public. So what you can, can see when you go to browse as Bogdan has done, and you can do this logged out, um, you see on the browse page, maps, icons, and sites. Under each row, it says see more. So if you wanna click the one under maps, and right now it says show, 30, show all, and it's 33. So there's 33 maps that are now public. And you can see um, the range here. I see um, ULA's test. I see um, maps made by um, Hannah, Hannah, who's here. And Mary's map is here, of course. So there's a quite, a, quite a range of maps, including I wanna show the, there's the language test. And we left that up because you can see any language works on the platform that way, regardless of which direction. The other one that's interesting is on the right right now, oops, left, excuse me, and it just rolled off the screen if you come down a little, but it's the one about lines and areas. So we made a map that demonstrates every kind of, it's just above here, Bogdan, if you can scroll up just a bit. Yeah, great. It has every kind of map and, and uh, I mean, excuse me, every kind of route and area that we are testing. And you can see all the different kinds of colors and the shapes of the icons that have changed for this. And we're welcoming feedback on this. This is something that we can continue to add to. If you click the title of the map on the lower left, it will take you to the overview of, the, of any map on this platform. So could you click that please? Just, oh, you wanna, so you can see the whole list is here and you can uh, read more about this, uh, the goal here, but they act, whether they're an area, a route, or a point, they all act the same. They have the same kind of um, description on the browse page. All of these are different kinds of bike routes or areas on this map. So play around with it a little bit and you'll see. So would they be considered sites? They're features, if you want to use the proper word for it. Okay. And that word throws me off. I'm not used to using it either for talking about that range of features on the map. But if you use right. it in a sentence, it starts to make sense. Okay. okay. Thank you. So is there anything else here you want to show Bogdan and Alexandra at this point? You're good? I okay. Think we're good yeah. 
Yeah, I All think right. we are good, yeah. Okay, so we're 20 minutes in. Um, if you wanna take your screen down, I'm really thrilled to see this huge group of people here. This is really wonderful. I think we have five continents in the room. Uh, I don't quite know everybody, um, but let us go northwest of the US. She's in Washington state, and she's gonna tell us how she used this platform. Um, there's Mary. <laughs> Mary's in here. And so what I have, I have done up here that's a little bit different. I would, let me share my screen here and get up with where I am. Okay. So my situation up here, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of branding and how to keep your brain from exploding, putting one of these things together, because it can quickly get into mission creep. And once you have a map, like anything, once people see something, they go, I want to be on and I want to be on. And pretty soon it's like, how do you keep things a little bit focused? That was my concern up here. So this is a very focused vertical um, map just for the food system up here. And what I'm working with is the, um, this is the community wellness project. And just a little background on it. Here's the, uh, the board of the community project. You have Rachel, who is a goat farmer and she makes cheese. And we have uh, Christy down here and she makes cider. These are busy women. So there's five women, okay. And then you look at the actual uh, committees and um, down here when you get to the committees, you see the uh, Jefferson County food green map. That would be me, I'm the committee. <laughs> so these are very small situation, but it's like if you're making a map in a big city, you still have a small group of people, but instead of fields between you, you have buildings between you. So it's basically the same thing. That's what we're looking at. Here. Mary, is this information available on your map or is are you on your website now? I'm on the website for the Community Wellness Project. Okay, got it. So the map itself is over here under Feed Jefferson County. And the first thing we had to do when you're, you know, if you have a group of people, um, let me get my little, little thing out of here, is you need to get, you know, ask them to put a logo together because that's gonna focus everybody very quickly on which they want. And once they focus that in and focus on their tagline, it's gonna save you a whole lot of chit chat later on what you really wanna be putting that map towards. And in this case, Feed Jefferson County stands for Food, Education and Enterprise Development. So anything that we have on the map is aimed towards that. And it's also aimed towards students. So in the case of, um, okay, we can, we're going to a degree map now, correct? I don't have to change pages or anything. Okay. No. You can see the map, correct? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so in putting this whole thing together, um, and that, that was part of it too, because we had bigger green map type things going on. I wanted to keep it just to schools and anybody who's helping the schools. And that helps edit out things like in the case, we have a lot of tasting rooms and wineries and they didn't want that part of the farms that the schools be incorporated with. So we, we did that. And then in the case of, this, um, of setting this up, they wanted something that showed how all the farms related to the schools. And I wanted to create growing your own food into a sport. So if you think about it in, those, in that context, the map now becomes the stadium. And the vendors are the people selling you hot dogs outside the stadium. And the schools are the teams kind of competing from one another. And we're all just you know, people out there watching from outside looking in. And so once we did that and we went over to, and thank you for the search box, which I really like a lot. And um, this is, I'll have a side comment here. The search box is really cool because you could put the schools in here. And this is how most people will do it because they understand searches. Um, and then I'll have to do a little demo for the school's kids themselves to see how to use the, um, um, the text box, or I'm sorry, the icon box. So when we're looking in here, so like Chimicum High School, I can pull this up. This started out as just women taking a whole bunch of money in and pushing it towards the farm to fork program. Map wasn't part of them. Their website wasn't part of them. Last year, all they were is a holding place for money. And now it's a knowledge portal. And that's what we're trying to build out here. So what I really like about here, and this is where my, the biggest thing to come across or to, to do for yourself when you're creating a map is decide what information you want to have on each one of these little tabs first. And I came up with a system, so I wanted to make sure it's feed. So I had something on the garden. That's the food part. 
And what are the bullet points that I wanted to hit from one school to the next? Culinary arts was the third one. And then the food services programs and what they're doing in funding sources. Now you're into the business of what's going on with each one of these. I want the community to see who's giving the money to whom and how are they participating? Because everybody wants to participate, but they don't know how. So that's kind of a little intro. And then I took them over to the where to take action and they can give money or volunteer or whatever over there. So this is just a funneling device for doing that. But the other part of this, by being the same on each one of the schools and having this is the exact same format, one school principal or superintendent can look at the next, can look at the next, can look at the next, and they can see and compete with one another. They have an orchard, we don't, maybe we should start. But as long as this information is the same, and then we hit the show more, really like this whole system. Now they can see at a glance, again, what one school offers versus another school, and they can do some comparing and contrasting and see how they can you know, make this a little bit better. I started this last year, <laughs> a month before COVID, <laughs> and COVID hit and everything slammed down. So this was supposed to be a group project of working with students at each school to fill out the maps and everything else and the farmers, and it turned out to be me filling everything out. And now that it's here, the way we're using it, um, how it ended up being used, because there's so many things on here, is journalists are coming around and they want to start doing stories on the food production that we have here in the peninsula, which is huge. So we've had three really big press stories already because they can see this is now a going concern. It's not, um, it's made the intangible tangible, which has been a great thing and a great selling point for this area. And so we're trying to do that a little bit more. And as we go forward, the other thing I can do now is I've started, there's a blog on the website and every week I'm doing a blog post and every week that blog post links back to the map. So the map becomes the anchor for everything else. It's not a part of the mix, it is the mix. And once people can see that, then they start taking pride in their school, the students can start showing off what they're doing. Those links will just naturally spread out and, and do what they're supposed to do. But now the community wellness project isn't, well, what is wellness? What is food? It helps people really see at a glance what it is and how they're going forth. And with the kids doing it, it makes it justifies everything else for other people going out, if that makes sense. The farms, here's a good example too. Um, COVID hit, we didn't have a whole lot of money up here. The farms all closed down. It's lambing season, everybody's starting to grow stuff. And because they had a map and they could see one another, the community could now see where they could go for the CSAs and go buy stuff locally. And everybody sold out of their CSAs and sold out of their meat and everything else. The community rose up and went local and bought local, which is very cool. And that was a very little promotion on my part. Um, so that's pretty much it. The, um, it's the, it gets down to basic branding for the, the tighter you can get your purpose and your mission, the happier you're going to be because if you have a team of people, they're each going to make individual decisions. And if they can take that decision against, in my case, they can say, okay, I want to put a picture up. Is it talking about food? Is it talking about culinary? Is it talking about a garden? Um, talking about education? Or is it talking about creating businesses for food and education? And they can take it against that. And that eliminates a lot of questions when you can do that, if that makes sense. And um, I'll leave it at that. Any questions anybody has, you're, gonna, you're welcome to uh, give me a call or um, uh, email or a Zoom. Happy to chat. I have a question. Sure. So we are going to eventually have our own map as well. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have participants entering their data. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. In the, I can't scroll on under the, uh, the photo, the main photo is what you were saying, the list of the information and then you had the funders, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do they just fill that in themselves or is there a template or is there, are there fields that are separated so that they know this is the section that describes your school, this is the section that describes your food program, this is the section that describes this, and then you don't have to worry about confusion or parallelism in the way that they're structuring it? 
Um, this is where, again, committee of one, schools closed. Right. It's all in my head. And what I was doing, I actually had an Excel spreadsheet. So I had each of the questions down that I wanted to hit for each of the schools and just filled out the Excel sheet. And then that, that way I didn't, you know, um, not know what to put on there. I also had a hard copy of how I wanted things to look. So then when I'm typing them in, I'm typing them in exactly the same way. And that, that system could be used with the team as well as just yourself. Right. And Mary has actually worked with me on a document about control, and she's also, I think you listed out your, your uh, section somewhere, and this is all really useful, I think, when you're thinking about how does one, one or many person really structure their map. Her method has been, I think, really shown to be how important this can be done, how well this can be done. And I want to also say she really thought about the audience and she didn't mention that, but except for saying this is to involve the kids. But we always encourage people, think about your audience. How are you going to, what kind of language, what kind of issues in your community are going to start moving that particular audience? Because it's so different all over and there's so many issues now where people can get engaged and really make an incredible change. This has been a sea change in Port Townsend, right? Over the last year, wouldn't you say? Pretty much. And the other part of it too, because we now have the search box up here, which I didn't have when we started, it was all searching by icon, which is really great. And I have to bring that back a little stronger. But with the search box, knowing that it's there, when I go back to tweak these sites now, I'll be adding emergency word into separate places where people because we have a big emergency preparedness thing up here nobody will see that but we behind the scenes will know that so if it hits the fan i can go in here type emergency and it's going to pop up everybody who does stuff that we need to know on the peninsula to handle that problem Done. and this and is especially bad. around food right it's food banks it's not to be around food but when i was working with uh, the local 2020 which is all sustainability and all emergency preparedness that's a different way of looking at things. It's a way of, a, instead of just using the icon to show where you do things, you can also, in, you know, do little uh, secret Easter eggs as we call them, you know, put them, put them in there behind the scenes in the, in the uh, search bar, into copy in the text. And you could pop that up as well. It's just, it's a, it's a, a strategic idea versus, um, you know, doing your, your initial, audience. <laughs> it's really sense. interesting when you think. And I did. I chose the schools again because when people come to me like the farms, they go, well, we want, you know, everybody wants to be on here. It's like, well, do you help the schools? Do you integrate with the teachers? Do you have different programs? And they say, no, we don't. Well, this is how you can. And it starts building that community up a little bit more, a little bit more, because I've, I've set the objective of this as the schools as a base. And now I don't overlap on top of all the other farm tours and all the other things that are going on over here because this has a very specific thing that we're doing. And if it does overlap, that's great. The more people see and talk about something, I'm good about that. Mary, so to this other gentleman's point, do you have a template to maintain your format? I know that you're a committee of one now, but as things... I, I don't, Deb. I, I have the Excel sheet that I put together for myself, which is kind of a mess, but again, committee of one. Um, <laughs> And I have the, um, you know, the hard copy itself that I have off to one side that I just have pasted on the wall. And then I could look at that and make sure it looks the same from one thing to the next. If I had a team, I would formalize both of those. Got it. Thank you. And I will say that our previous, our previous, oh, sorry, Alexandra, our previous platform, we did have it very structured, lots of little boxes. And we found that was kind of annoying for people. So Alexander, what do you want to say? We want to make it, make it freestyle. So you can make your own pattern within it. And maybe it's got uh, Spanish first and then English or mm -hmm. um, go ahead, Alexandra. Uh, I wanted to say that the platform itself does uh, support more structuring, uh, but Green Map opted for, uh, as Wendy said, offering a lot of freedom to people and because also the icons can be used for very different projects different kinds of projects. So uh, we can have certain questions mapped to an icon and ask people to answer those questions specifically when they add a site that uses that icon. Um, 
this is possible with the platform, but um, this is, has not been configured for the green map icon. So you can make your own icons that have these uh, questions. We call them attributes. Uh, and we support different types of inputs. So you may have certain options you want to give people to answer or free text that they can input uh, or other kinds of data uh, that you want to get. Uh, but this is more advanced use. So I would suggest that if you want something like this, uh, please let us know and we can uh, give you a demo and help you to set it up. Now, I would add one more thing and the same thing. Um, I, I wasn't that familiar with all the icons. I had to get reacquainted to where they were and what, what they're going to be doing. I had an Excel sheet for that too. So I knew if a school had certain icons, the next school had certain icons in the same order. Otherwise I'd forget, did they have it? Did they not have it? Who has this one? Does it all make sense? And quite frankly, you know, I, I just like the maps being developed on the fly, I was developing this on the fly as well, trying to figure it out as we go, what makes sense. So now that it's developed, I'm spending the time going back to each one of these and making sure the icons are exactly what I want now that I've thought about it a little bit more and how I want to use it going forward and how I want to do the videos to teach other people how to use it to their best um, knowledge. So Mary, to that point, when you said that you've set it up so that the icons are in order for each school that's listed on here with your narrative, how did you, well, actually it's because you're a singular author. So you're doing this in a particular order mm -hmm. to, to be able to see across all these schools if the same icon is appearing. You know that you've put, for instance, in this for Port Townsend High School, that first icon, you'll use that across the board as the first icon is what you're saying, if that's, well, that's relevant to that school. That's, that's the choice. In this case, this is a food bank garden. So this isn't, it happens to be at the high school. So it's a little confusing. I had to choose which one goes first. I don't really care what order follows after that. It's just that they're there. And I couldn't remember which ones I put on one or the next. And that's why I had to just kind of do a little check sheet to make sure I didn't do overkill on icons as well, because it's easy to do. It just looks more important when you have a lot more on there. And for example, here's a good one. So here's the, the food bank symbol that comes secondary. This is a garden that serves the food banks, but it isn't a food bank itself. So anybody who gave produce to food banks would get that food bank icon on there. But when you go back to the top, and if you type in a, a food bank, you know, you'll get everybody here. You can see you've got schools. It looks, it gets kind of confusing. So that's when I had to think through a little bit more if I want to keep that icon there or not, because it looks like you're serving food there. And there's a lot of food that is being served at the schools right now. We have like 172 families that we're feeding um, through COVID. So it's, it's, that makes sense. That's why this gets a little bit confusing. I have to kind of think it through a little bit more on what I want and what I don't want there. And I want to say, yeah, you know, the, the search, search bank. Mary's right. done an amazing job on this. And one of the neat things about how the platform is built that makes it possible to go back like this is that you can just click on the icons when you have the um, form open and change which one is the primary icon. So maybe you've decided on your map, you only want eight different icons to show on the map itself as the primary. And so it's pretty quick to make that change now. Anything you put on this platform can be updated anytime, and it can also be shared to a second map anytime. So, or third map, that's another good point. Maybe Mary, uh, do you have anything else you wanna add or just? To, to, the, to your point and sharing with other maps, because we do have a larger sustainability map that people are looking at to put up and they wanna just take all this and put it up on the sustainability map but they have a different purpose. Right. And so they may not want the purpose I have, in which case what I have doesn't fit their purpose. They can grab information off and retype it in over here. But if you just say this map, this information goes on this map, this map, this map, it's the same information in all three places. Right. You can't. So that, you just have to think that one through a little bit more as well. Did the student the, in the schools, they sent the information to you and you added it to the map 
or did they add it to the map and you just improve it? No, I, I went through and uh, solicited information myself and put it on the map. The schools don't, aren't even aware of what's going on because COVID happened, everything closed. They were concerned about educating kids and feeding them. Uh, you know, maps were not on their agenda <laughs> and we're still pretty much closed down at this point. So Thank this is you. all working behind the scenes and you know, that it'll grow <laughs> well, I, I will, in the long term. <laughs> Leah, one good thing about how this platform is designed, and maybe then we can move on to the new features and discussion part. Maybe Mary can take down the shared part so we can all see each other again. It was such a good presentation, though. I'm thrilled. Um, but it's because the platform is set up, somebody suggests a site, you, the map maker, gets a notification by email, and you get to check over that site information before you make it public, that's your opportunity to expand on what the student said or make any corrections or add additional information. So nothing goes live that the public or students that you're working with um, belong on, uh, go directly to the map. Now we do have a rule, you have to be 13. This is the uh, uh, Child Protection Act. You have to be 13 to work on the internet, on this platform on your own. So if you're in a school situation with parents, whatever, that's okay. But that's a, I believe that's an international law that protects young people. Um, and so we've adopted it as well. So um, maybe we can turn it over to Alexandra and Bogdan to hear about some new features or how do you want to do this? <laughs> because the new features are amazing, I just got to say. <laughs> I think Bogdan will take over to quickly show some of the new things that we've been working on. And some are have been released for a while, some are quite experimental. So in case you find issues when trying them out, we'd be happy to hear and we'll try to react fast and fix them. So. For communication, can I uh, can you write in the chat the um, like Alexandra uh, way to communication with you? Yes, all of that. By the way, under the tab called um, inf is it info or about, you can directly query um, report issues on GitLab right there. Um, there's an FAQ there. Um, email an issue. So you can report it different ways. Either you can put it on GitLab. If you, uh, if you don't use GitLab, you can email directly to them. And I have to say, I'm, I'm amazed how fast and how well um, questions yeah, can be answered. I can help people with the basics. Go ahead. If you scroll to the bottom in the FAQ, we also have this address, hello at GIS Collective, that we monitor and we will reply if you write to us there as well. Great. So just use the options on the website or write to that address. Thank you. All right, so can I quickly show you what we recently added? <clears throat> All right, so I will start with um, this uh, translations. So since we last met, we have translated the app to Fran uh, France, uh, French and English and uh, Spanish, sorry. <laughs> So if you want to contribute and help us with the translations, just let us know and we can translate it to your uh, local language. Uh, then next, <clears throat> if I go to browse and let's say I edit one of it's, oh, my new map that I just shown previously. Here we had we have a new uh, section co called license. So if you fill in here some license, usually you would li like to use like a, some creative commons or something like this and a, a new URL to this. Um, let's put green map. Um, something like this, when, when, you, when someone browses your map, you'll see the license here. So people will- so I'm that, sorry, what is the license for? Yeah, this is in case that someone wants to use the data that you just published, they can know on what on which terms they, they can use it. So this is your place to put that, this is my private data, don't use it. 
or you can copy and edit it and publish it uh, forward, but just um, let us know where you do it or something like this. Uh, if you well, don't know. Yep. I was going to say, we'll add in the, in the tutorial some examples for you people. That's as soon as this is, because this is brand new. Creative Commons is a good idea. Yeah, usually you would probably want to use one of these uh, licenses. But so there are, is that a requirement to fill in? No, 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 no. Okay. it's optional. All right, uh, another thing that we added is this, um, the select all uh, button on the uh, list view uh, where you can quickly publish or unpublish all the sites on your map or maybe delete them. Uh, bef before you had to check each checkbox and it was quite annoying, but now you can just do this and publish. This and is all my big, sites are published. This is a big help for people with existing data on older maps that they're like, these places don't even exist anymore, they're gone. So they're deleted from the platform if you delete them here, right? Yeah, exactly. So basically you can go back to an old map is what you're saying and you'll find a list of sites and you can manage that. Yes. Thank so this you. is something people always wanted. We never had this before. And this is a, a huge plus to have bulk editing, bulk deleting like this is great. Thank you. Yeah, and another feature that we added is this checkbox, uh, which is show download links. And if you enable it um, here, you, you will see this download button. So other people can download, download your map data as CSV, GeoJSON, and Geo, Geo package it's uh, reserved only for your uh, team members. But if you are not authenticated, you will enable CSV and GeoJSON download. So the, the purpose of this is if you want to contribute with open data to other projects, you can do that. And this new toggle that Bogdan added uh, allows you, enables you now to choose. Do I want to make it easy to share this data or do I want to rather keep it on the platform only? So this is related to the license? It, it can be related, yeah. So maybe if you want to have a Creative Commons license, you want to make it easy for others to download and reuse the data in other projects. Where do you edit, where, where did you sign it that uh, allowed on download? Um, on the edit page for your map. It's here on the on this bar. You have this option. And we might we're talking about maybe putting anything related to open sharing on this side panels. So it's clear whether you're make, just making the site public, you're making the data available, you can control all that from here. I think that's a great idea, <clears throat> including the license information. Mm -hmm. It's important, you know, the world is going more and more open all the time. Janet's a good example of somebody who worked a ton on the earlier platform and never had the ability to share data like this. She would have to have downloaded the CSV and given it to somebody. What was your question, Janet? Um, is there a way to track who's using the data, who's visiting the site, that kind of thing? Unfortunately not. We don't track the users and what they do. And even if they try to get the data from the website, we cannot find where is it used. So I think this is a hard topic to cover. Yeah. As far as, <laughs> is there a way to track people who visit the site? Because again, always when you're looking for funding for something, you need to show its use. Very good point. Yeah, we, we, can, we can think about how we can address this uh, topic. Yes, yeah, so here uh, we have on the one hand the privacy of people who use the platform versus other goals like funding where you need to have some data. So for now we, we have more uh, leaned towards offering privacy to people so we don't track anyone, we don't store any data about who uses it from where they are and we don't 
uh, have any aggregated data, but if this is something that uh, is needed for the future, please contact us and we'll see how and when we can accommodate that. Yeah, thanks, Alexander. All right, and the last big fe uh, feature that we added is the campaign feature. And I, I think I, Talk, I talked about this a few months ago because we noticed that it's hard for people to contribute to this proposal site because it's more designed for um, advanced users. So we have this campaign now. So how do you create a campaign? It's similar, like you create a map or a site or a team. And I will try to fill in some fields now. This would be a campaign for our local project where we want to create a map with all the sounds in uh, Berlin. All right, so I create this campaign and here I have a bunch of options like before, I can uh, publish the campaign or I can make it private. I can add some mandatory icons and this means that everyone who will propose a site through this form, they will have these icons by default. So for example, uh, let's choose these two icons. And um, also we can have optional icons. And those are the icons that um, the users can uh, choose. Then I have a cover photo, which I can use. Let's use uh, this one. And then here on the map, I can choose on which map I want um, the features to arrive. So I will choose my new map. And then I have a bunch of uh, options like um, if someone doesn't fill in the name, we can add a prefix, but I won't fill this in for now. Then I can have a nice question for the, for the name field. For example, what is the name of this place? Or a question for the description field, which might be why do you like this place? And please select some relevant icons. Or, and this option is if you want to allow only people that have a green map account to uh, answer or fill in these campaigns. But for now, I will leave it open. All right. So, so are you saying, so for example, Wendy, what, just as an idea here, is this suitable for doing public surveys? Well, let's let Bogdan finish because this is brand new. I haven't seen it before. So. I see. <laughs> yeah, so um, now if I go to my campaign, let's go here. Oh, first. Let's refresh the page. So now that I already had added a campaign, I have these campaign sections besides the browse. And when I go here, I will see all the campaigns. For now, this is the first one. And now I have my introduction to my campaign, its cover picture. And then I have the questions that I just added. So, um, the nice park, <laughs> and I like it because it's quiet. Perfect for you, sound map. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then you can choose some icons. So That's what nice. is important here is you can limit the number of icons that the participants see. And you've guided just two little questions from them. Is can you add more questions or no? You can. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, so, you can. Yep. So this is a streamlined, condensed way to engage people. They don't have to go through the whole process of sorting through all the icons. It's a very rel uh, limited number 
that they can do and they get to do the fun parts. Finish, go ahead and finish. <laughs> Yeah, so you can add more questions using the attributes features that we have. Alexandra briefly talked about uh, this feature. So if you design your own icon set that has some um, questions in there, you can ask other questions. Let me check if I have one here. So another way to ask that question, is there a limitation on the number of questions you can ask? Mm, no. You can add as many questions as you want. But okay. keep in mind that people don't want to spend a long time doing this. And is this a soundscape map where you can actually collect sound, upload sounds as well? Because we didn't show that. But there's now yeah, we'll, we'll add show it, yeah. MP3 files to any site on the map, any feature, excuse me. Yeah, I uh, unfortunately, right now, I don't have an icon with. Uh, with attributes that I can show. But uh, if you're interested in adding this, we can do another demo that's specifically to this workflow and we can teach you how you properly use this uh, complex feature because I don't think 10 or 20 minutes might, uh, are enough for this. But it gives us a little flavor of it and understanding that Alexander and Bogdan are continually developing new um, features for this platform that make it easier to engage your community. And I'm really happy to see this one because it answers a lot of the questions people have had about how do we get people involved who don't have a lot of time, might not have a lot of bandwidth, but still have something important to share about the uh, local sustainability. A quick question so, so about that, that feature. Um, so when, for those responses to so two questions, one, is it only just like a text response that people can give or is there like the option to give like a, like a checkbox or like a, like a choice menu? Um, that's question one, you know, so like, you know, out of these things, what's your favorite sort of like drop down idea? Um, that's question one. Question two, how do you see the results and can you like export those results? So yes, you can uh, have options uh, via the attributes, what Bogdan was mentioning earlier. And for the second question, uh, they these are sites that are added to the map that you selected. So you have them under that map and you can download the data as well in the formats that Bogdan showed, CSV, GeoJSON, or GeoPackage. Great, so thank to, you. To, to, so to Tom and Wendy's point for something like that, can you upload, for instance, using your example, can you can basically crowdsource potentially using that campaigns feature, urban sounds for Berlin. So you'd be able to upload MP3s or photos. Uh, so we currently don't have sound support for the campaigns, but it's something we plan to add soon. Uh, but you can add sounds uh, if you propose a site in uh, the way- No, you, you, you cannot yet. Oh, sorry, so, if you add the feature. <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the last feature that we added is the, this sound feature. So now you can add sounds to your, your tracks or your points. And if you add a sound, you can see it here and you can play it, but- uh, you probably cannot hear it because it's in my headphones. Um, yeah. Okay, so, th so the answer under campaigns is that you can have those text options. You can upload, excuse me, you can select icons, but you can't upload sounds or photos. You can upload photos, but in, that, cam in that campaigns section. Okay. Via the campaign, you can enter text, upload photos, uh, and soon also we'll be able to upload sounds. I would like to know how the licenses are, 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 um, are organized. Does the students, the pupils, uh, elementary school students, when they add a feature by the, uh, by the campaign, do I have to improve or the teachers can approve their uh, icon. So when someone adds a site uh, to, through this campaign, you'll be able to see it uh, on your map. I will go now to my map. And, and I put the Berlin sound map in the chat, link to it so you can hear it for yourself. 
Um, and folks, okay. we're going to be wrapping up in a few minutes. So I just want to let people know that uh, we're at time, but we're going to go a little over. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think I forgot to press the mute button for the previous answer, but you'll see this here, uh, this uh, feature that was proposed here on this list as private and then you can go and edit it and review the data and make it public. And the map maker is, is in the control on what arrives on their map. So, so until I make it public, no one will see what the participant added. That's exactly. right. Exactly, yeah. And scroll down so people can see the sound, um, yeah. add upload sound box. It's very simple. It's just like a photo box, just with a plus and grab the, the file off your desktop, so. Yeah, and for now we only support MP3 files, um, but we are working on adding more formats uh, for this uh, audio files. And yeah, I hope that we'll be able to do this soon. We have a lot of things on our plate, but uh, we'll let you know when this arrives. Thank you so much. This is really marvelous. And um, maybe if we could take the screen down, um, we can see everybody a minute and see if there's any um, last questions. I know it's a lot to take in. And one of the good things is this video will be back. I'll put it back on the first page, the greenmap.org slash story slash OGM2 that you get to right from our front page. So if this will be available, we'll be doing other um, um, <laughs> tutorials and gatherings. Who has a question, a quick question before we take off? Yeah, this is uh, Gautam here, Wendy. So uh, quick question. I'm not sure if this really comes into you know, perspective, but I, I came across this scenario uh, you know, a couple of years back. So you know, when, when we have a group of uh, folks you know, who are uh, going to you know, mark out certain uh, areas on the map, sometimes there are scenarios where some information is you know similar across all those uh, points you know maybe by the group or by the you know members uh, by the community some part of it like you know if 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 there's a certain set of uh, a college group which is putting up you know marking up green uh, areas on 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 uh, on the map you know something may be common so is there a way for them to you know apply common fields you know or uh, enter that information in one set and which will apply to all. So that's yeah. like cloning. Go ahead. Yeah, I think Can here you... our uh, attributes feature would be helpful for you. I can quickly show you how, how this works. We showed it in some previous uh, demos, but basically you can go here to plus and create your own icon set. Um, Let's call it my icons for now and assign it to a team. And then here you can have plus icon and you can create your own custom icon. So how is that related to the attribute section? Yeah, so all the attributes are related to uh, an icon. I will quickly, I will show this soon. So you're using, you're using those minute. words in... Let interchangeably him, let him show icon. you yeah let him show you yeah so here on on your custom icon you'll have the list of attributes so you, if you go here and edit you can add attributes like uh, i don't know um, um, area and you can add, uh, add a custom in what's the area of this park let's say and then you can add the help message and the type. This is an integer or a Boolean or so on. And you can add as many attributes as you want. And, and wherever you use this uh, custom icon, you'll have these options available. For, so for example, if I go back to my campaign and select here the icon, um, custom icon, Uh, and go back to the campaign. I will see these questions here, right? And 
those fields will also be available on the site and you can have like a structured um, description of this site or bike, bike track or whatever. But I think this is a way more complex feature. If you're interested into uh, working with this, we can have like a special session where we show you how to use this uh, particular one. Because I so, could see where Mary's and Mary's examples for um, you could make a special one for um, county fee, uh, food bank, for example, and people who would do that. And then the text that relates to those county food banks, is this correct, would automatically show up if you've used that icon. So it might have the hours, who qualifies, et cetera. So those um, would be called attributes? the qualified information under an icon? Yes. yes, and you can also extend the uh, open green map icons. For example, you can add attributes to the existing icons without changing them, but this is like a more advanced topic. Right, in, in, in some case, well, okay. It gets really complicated. And I'm wondering someday in the future, maybe we're gonna have to have a demo for um, the advanced, users <laughs> as well. Is, um, does anyone have a last comment or question? There's, I'm so glad. How, how many countries, first of all, can we just see how many countries are in the room before people have to take off? Um, US? UK? Israel? Um, India? Oh. Nobody from India. Um, <laughs> yay. <laughs> um, I see Denmark. Um, and Utah said she was from Germany. And Mike, where are you from? Maybe he's not here. Um, anyhow, I'm glad to see so many in the room. I think we had a couple others earlier. I wanna say thank you to everybody. I wish you the best with your local maps. Anyone have a last question? I see a hand up from Israel. Wait a minute, Dolly, Dolly, Ben. Oh, unmute. You can unmute yourself. Well, I have questions, but they are prior to what is you, you showed here. So I, I don't know. Do you have to improve a map that I open or can I just practice and open a few maps and then delete them? Yeah, yeah. sure. If, if you keep them private, no one besides you will be able to see them. So you can try and play and do whatever you want there. And you can test out different, if you wanted to test different ways of like kind of doing the layout of the description, you could get feedback from people that way on a, kind of test map there's it's a very flexible tool um, any other users of the platform want to add anything that people heard are using it i know ula worked with kids this summer uh, or last summer um, and hannah has also been making some maps that appear in in the real world is that right am i saying it correctly Hi, Wendy. Uh, I would like to ask uh, like a general question. I'm from Israel <laughs> and it was very interesting. Uh, I would like to know, I'm uh, with Leah group, Leah Wave. <laughs> uh, and we are a couple of people here that are going to walk in Hedera. It's a middle town in Israel. <laughs> and we want to know if there's any question, uh, technical uh, question or more, um, wide question, I'll, I'll say, uh, can we ask you or uh, Alexandra, or who can we ask? Who can we get help from? I, I wrote in the chat the address that you can write us at, hello at giscollective.com. Uh, we will definitely reply there. So feel and free. That, that's about the platform and the technology. I can help you with anything else. I'm the director of Green Map System since, oh, before you were born. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, Not before um, I was born. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, many people here have had good experiences working with young people and experiences that they've shared and we've all been able to uh, learn from. So I'm happy to get on the call. I'm already coming to your March 3rd event and I'd be happy to get on with you, your team beforehand, if you like. I really, 
I think all of us want all these projects to succeed regardless of um, how, how many people they can involve, whether it's a team of one or a team of a thousand. Um, lots of great potential here. Hannah was just gonna say something and then I think we'll wrap it up after that. Hannah? Sorry, when I was just actually responding to what you said. Now I've been doing a bit of experimentation with the platform just for heritage mapping really is what I've started with. Um, so yeah, my maps, some of them have been published and just used as um, really a really useful way of quickly gathering data up to use in different ways as well. So, so my maps are published, but also have been developed beyond the platform as well. In other ways, so yeah, it's been a really useful tool so far. So uh, Hannah is a social designer. There's, she's in, featured in the blog from last month. So if you look on our website, you can see some images of what she's doing. It's really cool and really engaging, I think, for people in this difficult time we're all in. So um, I'm going to say that's it for today. We'll announce another uh, workshop sometime. Um, wishing you all the best of luck and special thanks to Mary, Alexandra, and Bogdan for all they did to make today work so well. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Save the chat if you want and have a I'm beautiful there. day. Bye. 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 <laughs>